Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session organized by APLMA's Green and Sustainable Loan Committee. I'm Yasmin Jedai, and I head the Sustainable Finance Team for Asia Pacific at Société Générale. And alongside other members, we aim at contributing to ESG capacity building through presentation of landmark transactions in sustainable finance space. So I'm pleased to present today this session uh, to discuss Kiwi Rail inaugural green loan financing to uh, finance two uh, inland ferries in New Zealand. This loan is the first ever green loan certified by Climate Bond Initiative in the shipping space. And we thought it would be interesting for you to have an overview of the, of the deal. So for that, I'm happy to welcome today uh, three speakers. So we have Michel Main, Sustainability Manager at Kiwi Ray, Brian Robertson, Senior Certification Manager at CBI, and Gwenaëlle Delatre, Head of Shipping with Société Générale for Asia Pacific. So I suggest we start with a presentation on Kiwi Rail sustainability uh, ambition and strategy, uh, as well as uh, uh, its ambition and how it fits with New Zealand uh, carbon neutrality ambition and the shipping industry transition journey, as understanding the company, its business model, and its sustainability strategies are always a prerequisite before financing and structuring any sustainable financing solution. So, Michel, I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you the floor. Thanks, Yasmin. So, Kiwi Rail is a state-owned enterprise operating in New Zealand. We move freight and people by rail and ship and play a critical role in New Zealand's transport system. One of our, our purpose is stronger connections, better New Zealand, and our ferries are a critical part of that connection providing freight and supply chain logistics for the country. As shown on this map, the ferries, known as the Inter-Islander, connect our North and South Islands across the Cook Strait. They link the road and rail network via the ports in Wellington and Picton. Next slide, please. So in a typical year, key rails, trains and ferries transport more than 18 million tonnes of freight, enable 28 million low carbon commuter journeys, and prior to COVID, typically moved around 1 million tourists. In terms of freight, this equates to approximately 12% of New Zealand's freight tasks and 25% of New Zealand's total exports. Through our activities, the value of rail provided by Kiwi Rail to New Zealand's economy is estimated to be between $1.7 and $2.14 billion each year. Next slide, please. The value of rail is calculated by determining what the effect on the road network would be if the rail network was removed. For example, how many additional trucks would be needed on the road and what would be the implication of that if rail didn't exist. The value of rail is calculated from six key areas, reduced congestion in our cities, reduced air pollution and fuel use, fewer GHG emissions, reduced road maintenance costs and better road safety outcomes through a reduction in road injuries and fatalities. Further to that, Kiwi Rail also provides employment and career opportunities for our 4,200 strong team and provides flown opportunities for many businesses across New Zealand. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, Kiwi Rail operates throughout the country. And so we have a duty and desire to minimize the impacts of our operations and to grow the prosperity of the country. Our sustainability strategy is based on three key pillars of the environment, society and economy, with a series of targets and activities under each. We also recognize the impacts of our operations and embrace the role that we can play in advancing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or the UN SDGs. As such, each pillar of our strategy is underpinned by an SDG. You'll see there that our environment pillar is underpinned by SDG 13 or climate action, which our new Inter-Islander ferries will support through their reduction in emissions. Through our other business activities, we also support the advancement of SDG 9, Industry Innovation and Infrastructure, and SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. Next slide, please. So last year, Kiwi Rail emitted approximately 232,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent for our scope one and two emissions. As you can see from the graph on screen, 
around 93% of our emissions come from fuel usage by our locomotives or trains and our ferries, both of which are heavily reliant on fossil fuels. The remaining 7% of emissions comes from other activities across the business, for example, our passenger fleet and our um, electricity usage by our facilities. As a business, we've committed two carbon reduction targets, which are to reduce emissions by 30% by 2030, and that's to align with New Zealand's commitment to the Paris Agreement, and to also be net zero carbon by 2050, and that's to align with New Zealand's Zero Carbon Act that was passed into law in 2019. In New Zealand, transport emissions make up about 20% of all emissions, with the bulk coming from road transport, including heavy road freight. While emissions from rail make up less than 1.8% of that total. Importantly, every tonne of freight shifted by rail emits 70% fewer emissions than the same volume shifted by road. So we've got an important role to play in supporting New Zealand's transition to a low emissions future. In addition to the new ferries, Kiwi Rail is also investigating how to transition its locomotive fleet in line with the carbon reduction target. The solutions for a low carbon rail system are likely to be a mix of some further network electrification, battery hybrid technology, and other new energy systems, and is a space that we continue to investigate closely while also continuing our ongoing focus on improving our fuel efficiency measures across our various fleets. Next slide, please. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Gwenelle, uh, I would like to, uh, to have your views on how the shipping industry is evolving. And as, uh, as you are aware, decarbonization of the, uh, of the industry is a significant challenge. And uh, as mentioned by Michelle, uh, green uh, solutions are still to be explored. So can you give us your views on, on how you see uh, the, the industry evolving in that space? Sure, thank you, Yasmin. Uh, maybe just taking a step back uh, about the industry itself. And we have to bear in mind that shipping um, transports about 90% of all goods which are produced on earth, and yet it still emits 3% only of the global emissions are uh, um, uh, emitted annually. So relatively speaking, it's still the most efficient uh, uh, way from an environmental perspective for transporting passengers and goods over long distances when we use a, a ton, ton mile metric. But it's true that the industry does realize that it still needs to play its part in the decarbonization actions and, and, and make the world a better place. So there is a growing pressure from governments, society, uh, industry, and finances uh, to make the industry uh, uh, even more carbon efficient and reduce uh, uh, even further the, uh, the carbon emissions. And it's even more true for all the vessels which sail close to coast. I think that there is uh, an increased reluctance from people to accept uh, emissions which are close to uh, uh, close to their own uh, back backyard. So we see a lot of regulatory push from the International Maritime Organization, but also from many regions and countries and international bodies to, to make this happen. Uh, from the private uh, initiatives perspective, we also see banks coming together, for instance, to push a, a green agenda in industry. So we've seen banks coming together, uh, putting uh, uh, in place the framework called the President Principles. We've seen charters as well do similar uh, initiatives through the Sea Cargo Char uh, Char Charter initiatives. Uh, and of course, even ahead of the uh, COP26 uh, in, in, in Glasgow, we've seen quite a few uh, additional calls to decarbonize the industry. So the industry, uh, with all uh, these uh, uh, background initiatives, uh, has been pursuing quite a few uh, ambitions and targets, and we've seen quite a lot of research and development efforts into operational and design optimization of the vessels, new fuels being explored, uh, including transitional fuels. The key challenges that the industry still, still face today is that as of today, there is no zero carbon fuel or technology uh, to uh, make the industry fully green. You know, we don't have a technology or a fuel which as of today is meeting all the key criteria of being technically safe, commercially viable and scalable in terms of production, which makes the whole decarbonization agenda, uh, uh, of course, a challenge for owners. Uh, yet, 
you know, people have to uh, take initiatives today and take steps today uh, to start decarbonizing, decarbonizing the industry. So it's not an easy process, but what we can say and what we've seen uh, emerge over the past year and a half, two years from the industry is that uh, owners uh, need to take uh, a cooperative approach with quite a few parties along the value chain uh, to make this uh, you know, uh, an industry-wide approach to decarbonization. So we have seen people come together, uh, you know, port infrastructure uh, developers, fuel vessel suppliers, off-takers, shipyards, governments working together. And we see that there is a growing uh, realization that they need to keep working together to, to make this happen. And from that perspective, this transaction, which we'll talk about, ticks quite with uh, quite a lot of boxes uh, in there. The second thing that we've seen emerge in the industry is the need to have uh, uh, built-in flexibility in the assets themselves. You know, uh, Again, as of today, there is no green uh, uh, solutions, fully green solutions in the sense that uh, uh, you, know, you don't have assets which don't emit carbon at all during their operations. Uh, yet you can come up with assets uh, which are future-proofed, you know, which can evolve over time to go towards uh, a net zero. And again, this is particularly re relevant for that transaction, as we'll discuss later. Yeah, thank you, Gwenael. And you mentioned the collective effort, and, and Brian, turning to you, Climate Bond Initiative is part of this uh, important ecosystem, I would say. Uh, CBA has been very vocal on the shipping industry, and, and you have published a couple of years ago uh, some criteria on how to assess uh, the greenness of a transaction when it comes to shipping. Uh, maybe it's a good time for you to give us a little bit of, uh, you know, your views and, and more color about your criteria and guidelines. Thanks, Yasmin. So the certification scheme under the Climate Bond Standard currently has criteria for 15 sectors, and we have three sectors under development in addition to our work on transitions. Now, in this case, of course, our focus is certification under the shipping sector criteria. Shipping sector is significant, as Gwenelle pointed out, it accounts for roughly 80% of global trade by volume, about 70% of global trade by value. And between 20, 000, uh, 2018 and 2023, there's an estimated roughly 3.8 compound average growth rate for seaborne trade. Most of those emissions are carbon dioxide, but ship emissions from methane have been increasing due to the use and transport of liquefied gas and associated methane slip. Good news is that this sector can be decarbonized for the most part. How would we go about doing that? Well, the first way is by increasing the energy efficiency of shipping. And the second way is by reducing the greenhouse gas intensity of the energy that ships use. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. So when a debt issuer in the shipping sector issues debt, that issuer might have the option to get the debt certified under the certification scheme. The major determinant is making sure that the assets being financed meet the criteria. Here in this slide, we see the process that the issuer will go through in order to get its debt certified. It's very straightforward. Um, you align the assets, you engage a verifier, you issue the debt, after that, you do a post issuance verification report, and then you report annually. That's basically the process in a nutshell. Uh, next slide, please. The verifier that the issuer hires will check the debt issuance against two major pillars. So the first pillar, what we see here, uh, that's to make sure that the debt issuance meets the criteria of the current climate bond standard. We're currently in version uh, 3.0. Next slide, please. The second pillar is making sure that the debt issuance meets the sector specific criteria. The shipping criteria is quite straightforward. We've made a decision tree. First question we ask is, is the vessel primarily dedicated to transporting fossil fuels? If it is, then it's a hard stop right there. Certification won't be possible. If the vessel is not primarily dedicated to transporting fossil fuels, then we ask, is the vessel zero emissions? If yes, then it's certifiable. If not, then we would ask, 
will the vessel remain under the emissions intensity throughout the lifetime of the bond? If yes, then we get a managed uh, reduction plan that will show us how the vessel will remain under the emissions intensity throughout its operating life. And next slide, please. And here's an example of emissions intensity thresholds we've developed for the shipping industry. You can see here on the right side uh, for the year 2050, you can see zeros all the way down the column. And that means zero emissions. So in other words, it's been decarbonized. This is just a screenshot as an example. Uh, we have numbers for most ship sizes broken down by gigatons, but that'll give you the idea. And that's basically how we view uh, the greenness of the sector and how we go about evaluating it. Yeah, thank you, Brian. And I will come back to you in a few minutes to go more in detail on how you, you did approach the, uh, the transaction itself. Uh, but before doing that, um, I think it would be great to go into uh, more details on the structure itself. And Michelle, maybe you can give us you know more details on the use of proceeds of the financing and how this fits within your with your strategy uh, uh, around sustainability sure thanks yasmin so um as we explained kiwi rail's 350 million dollar loan facility to finance our new theories has become the first shipping loan in the world to be certified under the climate bonds initiative our existing fleet comprised of three ferries, a capacity constrained during the peak season, and then nearing the end of the useful lives for our inter-island business. The new ferries will be transformational in terms of both their operational capacity and environmental performance. They'll be able to carry at least twice as many passengers, three times more rail wagons, and nearly double the number of trucks and other vehicles. From arrival in 2025 and 2026, the new ferries will reduce carbon emissions by 40% compared to the current fleet. This is largely through the diesel electric hybrid propulsion system with the ability to increase battery capacity over the asset lifetime. The efficient hull design, as well as a number of other innovative measures have also led to improved environmental performance. In addition to reducing key rail's carbon footprint, being able to accommodate more rail wagons on the new ferries will also encourage more mode shift of freight from trains, sorry, off roads and onto trains, which will further support New Zealand's climate change ambitions and commitment to the Paris Agreement. Thank you, Michelle. Gwenelle, do you want to, to, to take over here and maybe, you know, mention more the, the, the terms and conditions of the, the transaction? Yes, absolutely. Um, maybe we can move to the next slide, please. Yes. Um, so very briefly, um, indeed, this is a $350 million, uh, so New Zealand dollar uh, financing on a pre and post delivery basis. Um, the tenor uh, of the financing is quite long, I would say quite, uh, quite in line with the long economic lives of, of these assets. And from a pure structuring perspective, the financing is quite standard from from uh, from ship financing uh, basis. Uh, the financing is secured, of course, by the two ferries. Uh, the vessels are being built in Korea and will be delivered in 2025 and 2026. Um, the project uh, attracted a very strong response from the bank group, uh, and uh, we were very happy to have been selected as uh, mandatory leader ranger and green loan coordinator uh, uh, for this financing, along with uh, a few of the banks in the regions. Thank you, Gwenel. Uh, and maybe a few words on the sustainability aspect of uh, the transaction. So the deal is, is a green loan. So it has been structured under the four principles of the green loan uh, principles. Uh, the use of proceeds are clearly identified and um, dedicated to a green asset, uh, which, are, which are the ferries. Uh, the deal benefits from a verification report made by EY, which was a precondition for CBI certification. To note that EY is an eligible verifier under Climate Bond Initiative. Um, among uh, another uh, other uh, other names uh, that that could do that work uh, there is also uh, a reporting an annual reporting made by kiwi rail and kiwi rail commits to do it on an annual basis uh, the report include 
uh, allocation uh, reporting on how the use of proceeds have been allocated, but also an impact reporting, which is an important aspect of, uh, of the Green Room. All those undertakings have been documented in the facility agreement. Now, uh, in terms of, of, of greenness, as mentioned by Brian, we have used uh, CBI criteria, and the main criteria was the uh, manage reduction plan, uh, which means that we had to assess how the, uh, how the asset would evolve, uh, which include actually uh, the fuel switch until full uh, powered batteries uh, solution. So um, the, plan to fuel, the plan to fuel switch uh, would allow the vessel to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to keep the emissions under the criteria mentioned by, uh, by Brian earlier. As a green loan coordinator, uh, our, uh, our mandate was to help Kiwi Rail on designing their green financing framework, coordinate with CBI and EY on the verification and certification process, as well as help Kiwi Rail on documenting the different aspects in the facility agreement. It's probably a good time for me to pause here, and, and maybe Brian, you uh, you can go uh, in more details about the uh, the, uh, the the green aspect and CBA approach here uh, in terms of uh, in terms uh, in terms of certification. Lane. Thanks, Esmin. So indeed, this is the first certification using the Climate Bonds Initiative sector criteria for shipping. And fortunately, it was quite straightforward without any major challenges. EY provided limited assurance for the Inter-Island Resilient Connection uh, IREX project against the Climate Bond Standard version three, as well as the technical requirements of the shipping criteria. And EY stated in its conclusion that the second rail enabled diesel electric hybrid ferry will be delivered no later than the stated planned 2026 delivery date. In addition, uh, Kiwi Rail would replace the battery size by a minimum of at least 10 megawatt hours before the beginning of 2035. The increased battery size will take the total battery capacity of each ferry to 18.5 megawatt hours. And that will ensure that the ferries remain under the Climate Bonds Initiative carbon intensity metric, the annual efficiency ratio, and will keep it there until the end of the loan facility in 2036. Thanks, Brian. We were indeed extremely proud to be part of this transaction as it was a landmark and breakthrough financing, which we, uh, we hope will pave the way for many others in the shipping industry. Uh, Michel, do you want to you know, to say final words before we uh, we close the the presentation? Great, thanks, Yasmin. Um, so on screen is a quote from Greek Miller, our CEO. And echoing Greek's comments, QRL is just really delighted to have achieved the world's first CBI certification in the shipping sector. We think it demonstrates our commitment to achieving our carbon reduction targets. We're really excited about the green borrowing framework we've established and we'll look to add to our green portfolio as opportunities arise going through our capital investment and also into the future. Importantly, it's also, it also paves the way and opens up really exciting industry opportunities for a collaborative approach to achieve uh, emissions reduction goals. So achieving this certification has taken a lot of hard work and we'd like to acknowledge all of those who have been involved starting with the Naval Architect, OFK Ship Tech, EY, alongside our banking partners, Westpac New Zealand, Bank of America, National Australia Bank, and finally, Societe Generale, our Green Loan Coordinator, who have all worked with us to help achieve this world first. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Michelle, and congratulations again for this uh, landmark transaction, and, and well done to all teams involved within CBI, EY, uh, the banking partners, the architect. So um, we reached the end of this session. Uh, we hope it has been helpful. So thank you very much again, uh, Michelle, Brian, and Wenael for your time today. And thank you all for your attention. And please stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you.